What is that? Who is that character now? Let us become detectives and try to find out the answer to this problem. Number one, you have to understand this concept of Saturn, the concept of Bacchus. When they are portrayed by the different artists who drew pictures of them or the sculptures, they're usually portrayed as a heavy set man with a white beard. And when in the Sistine Chap Chapel, uh, Michelangelo drew his picture, you could see the long flowing beard, and there are actually pictures of this man on a sled being drawn by snakes with wings. Snakes with wings. Snakes do not normally fly. But in this case, the snakes have wings, and the heavy set man is on his sled being drawn by these flying animals. He's performing miracles. He's, he's coming out on December 25th, which is not the birthday of Isa alayhi salam, has nothing to do with Christianity. It is the time of the, of the Bacchanalia and, and, and the Saturnalia. And he is representing riotous fun, drunken reverie. And so what happens on Christmas, the Christmas season, especially in America, people today are not even thinking about Isa alayhi salam. They're not even thinking about Jesus. They're looking how they can get drunk. On Christmas, what is going on? In the Caribbean and many parts, if they offer you a Christmas pudding, or Christmas pie, or Christmas drink, watch out. Because it's probably laced with rum or wine. That's the spirit of the season. Now this riotous occasion that was going on went so far that the Christian church banned it. And the Church of England, according to historical sources, actually banned it all the way to 1647. It was prohibited in England to celebrate Christmas because they saw Christmas as being a pagan holiday. This is an official position taken by the Christian church, the Church of England who were known at that time as Puritans. What happened was an individual was superimposed. A name was superimposed. We hear about the name of uh, Saint Nicholas. Now, according to some historical reports, St. Nicholas was a Christian bishop who lived in the 4th century in Asia Minor, which is now known as Turkey. He was a very thin man, very austere, he used to spend his time in prayer and fasting. And he loved children, and he spent his time dealing with children. And because of this now, his name, some believe, was imposed upon that day, and St. Nicholas or St. Nick comes into that position as being the main man of the day. There's another concept, which is even deeper than that, that Saint Nicholas himself is actually coming from the ancient writings of Beowulf. And in these writings, which are done in the Scandinavian region, we find the name Nick or Nickel or Nicker. He was known as a demon, the demon of the North. He was known as the evil spirit of the North, the name of Odin the evil principle. And so in Germany and in many of the northern countries, the people actually looked upon this so-called Saint Nick as being an evil force and they would tell their children in the winter time, don't go outside because if you do, Nicholas will come along, Nickel will come along, he'll capture you, put you in his bag and take you away. And so they used it as a negative concept. In Isaiah, in what is left of the Bible, in chapter 14, 13, the devil is, is known as the prince of darkness. And it is an understanding that his throne, the seat of his power is in the north. Somewhere in the north is the seat of power of this evil. And so the Germans also, when they depicted this Nicholas or this uh, Pelsnickel, as they would say, Pelsnickel in German, it means a furry devil. When they depicted him, they depicted him as a man with red fur. He had red fur coat. His base was in the north, and he was the essence of evil. And the, the Church of England, till 1647, took the position that this celebration could not go on. So what we are actually seeing is that the Christmas occasion was actually the time of evil. It was the time of the belief in the Saturnalia and the Bacchanalia. And because of this, they shifted the occasion to New Year's Eve. They shifted all of their feelings and their merriment and their evil to New Year's Eve. Now before we go to that, 
looking back at, back at Christmas, what is happening now on Christmas season? I don't know what goes on in Miami, but in the northern cities, on Christmas occasion, they, they put lights around and Santa Claus parades and St. Nicholas is outside and he's in the streets and everybody's talking about St. Nicholas and the poor children are taught that St. Nicholas is going to come down your chimney and bring you presents and keep his clothes white and red and go to all of the homes in the area and, and put our presents under your tree and then fly back out into space. And many of us were raised thinking, believing in this. Some of us would sneak into the night and look and see our father putting the present under the tree. We knew what he was doing anyway. But you went along with it and the people say, well, you know, it, it's Christmas. Don't you like to have fun? You want to stop the children from having fun? What kind of people are you? But what, is the, what are you teaching the children? You are using the name of Jesus and you are using a figure who historically is the devil. They are using his figure and he has now taken over the Christmas season. Christmas now to most people means materialism. You have to buy presents for your cousins and your friends and you gotta buy about 34 uh, presents and you find that most American people are in debt for six months after Christmas. Now where is Jesus? You get drunk, you fight, you lose all your money, the stores raise their prices, Isa alayhi salam is described as a very humble person. Most of the time he didn't wear shoes. Only one or two ch changes of clothing. A very simple person eating very simple food. Fasting most of the time. You see what is going on? There are two streams now. A stream of polytheism. A stream of monotheism. 